Happy Friday, my friend. Cheers. It's great to have, it's great to have you on the show, bud. What? Let me. What's, okay. What is that glass? Um, this glass. Okay, so it's um. Did you get that from Alton Towers? <laughs> no, it was actually um. I purchased it at the Amsterdam Dungeon. Hmm. So they. I don't know if you've ever been on one of these dungeon experiences before. Not the Amsterdam one. You might have been to the London I've one. Been to the, I've been to the one in York. Is that similar? I'm not, I've not done the York one, but I assume yeah. it's very similar where you kind of, you pay your ticket, you get ushered in by some actor. Uh, they tell you to do this, they do that. And then you kind of, you go around from like section to section and they just, I assume it's the same thing. It'll be, it'll be, it's just probably the same franchise, right? So it's everywhere. And so we get, we get to the end and we get pushed through the gift shop. And I'm looking around, oh, there's nothing I really want to buy. It's all overpriced. It's all kind of, um, you know, crappy stuff. And I thought, ah, you know what? I'll get the chalice. So the chalice is, yeah. I went to one in, uh, Br- uh, where was it? Blackpool. And um, there, oh, was okay. li- there were some live actors in there as well. Um, dude. Yeah, yeah. They said they're all. I don't know. Maybe the ones, the York ones, a bit different, but they certainly have. Um, they they have like the live actors. So yeah. Um, I remember in the, in the Amsterdam one I was in was um, I got called out for one of the sections, right? So they yeah. they, they grab a, a member of the of the of the, of the audience, like participate in this, and they do the whole thing of, you know, well, this this guy here in in the sixteen hundred whatever, you know, they they do the whole thing and they called me out and. I'd left my jacket on one side. So I put my coat down, I put my jacket down, I did this yeah. thing. And then the next thing, like ushering us through to the next section. So I get like two sections into this, uh, this, you know, this, this experience. And I'm like, oh crap, you know what? I've, I've, my jacket is like three, three doors back. It's like, how the hell, you know, I mean, this, it was really cold. It was like, I think it was like uh, November or December in Amsterdam now. So it was pretty damn cold. Yeah, and I'm, I'm saying I'm going up to the guy, and the guy's obviously in character. And I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, it's cool, it's good. You get here, you've got to move it." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah," but my jacket's like three rooms back. Get in here, and I'm like, oh, "My jacket, like, okay, get it at the end." You know, he's gonna like break his character <laughs> yeah. for like, one second just so he can. Have it. Then I get, I get to the, um, I get to the shop, and, and I said to the guy, "Like, listen, you know, I left my jacket in this room," and he's like, "Okay, no problem. We should go find it for you." And he goes, gets it, brings it back. So I felt like he saved my jacket. So I had to buy um, the chalice, steel, yeah, you, steel chalice. You probably, you probably threw him up as God, to be honest. Like, <laughs> if, he's try, yeah, if, he's well, try, if he's trying to be this, 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 uh, this actor, <laughs> you're like, <laughs> dude, where's my jacket? He's got to, he's got to get back into responsible mode. Yeah, it, it was almost like I was a customer. I changed from being like a, a participant into a genuine concern of where's my property. <laughs> so we had to break, break, break that. Yeah, <laughs> I think that'd be a fun job, though. Like, I think so. Day, yeah, I don't know how. Every I don't day know how it works. Scaring the shit out of people. Because I went to it was probably about a year ago now. I went to one of these zombie mazes, mm. and I don't know if you've ever ever seen one of them where they throw you in this cornfield and there's zombies everywhere and you have to essentially make your way through this, this maze right? and you have to avoid the zombies. But it, it's like, it's very much like you've got to participate, right? So if a zombie comes at you, you know, it's not going to grab you and bite you, but you play that you play on that. Oh yeah, don't get near me, you know, and you run away and you know, you, 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 of course you get those guys who are kind of, oh, they're going to stand there and try and like fight the zombie. And the guy's like, dude, I'm an actor. This is a job. Play along, but that all those people. We spoke. We spoke to the, the like the, the owner of it afterwards. We said, you know, it was really fun. It's really good. How did you know? How did you get all the actors to stay all day? And I was like, oh, most of them are like drama students from university. Right. They just volunteered because they just wanted some kind of experience doing yeah. anything. So it kind of transpired that they were all volunteers. Yeah. So they were making like all this money doing these these mazes, and all the, all the students were were doing it for free. So I mean. It's not that's like the perfect business. <laughs> you yeah. don't have to play. You don't have to pay your employees. <laughs> right. My my brother went to an escape room in Nottingham, and they had one of these live actors in there. What? Yeah, do you know which yeah. one I mean? What What's it called? Um, I, I know of them. There's actually one in our hometown, Lincoln, where I live, and um, they have like a very small escape room. But they, I think there's a, the one in Nottingham. And I think they also have like a big 
Sheffield as well. So it's very terrifying. Apparently, he, he, he walks around with like this axe, and he just he, it's like a real axe, right? And he would just he would just walk around yeah. the room with it, drag it behind him. And uh, <laughs> it's basically, kind of a Resident Evil game, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty anyway, cool. Bro, yeah, yeah, we 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 uh, we yeah, anyway. We... <laughs> yeah, dude, it's so great to have you on the show. Like, for, no, for people for who for people who are watching, um, Sam is my instructor. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's basically helped me along my journey so far. It's been a very small journey so far, but you, everything that I know is from this man here, Mr. Sam Tweed. So I'm very grateful <laughs> for that. Thank um, you very much, sir. We had um, Joey on um, earlier this week. And, oh, um, Joey, Joey Carter. Joey Carter. Oh, it, allow, allow yourself, Joey. Yeah. <laughs> what, what a man he oh, is, by the way. Such a great dude, yeah. Um, yeah. I met Joey, I can't even remember, like, it must have been like six, seven years ago now. You, you, know when you, you know when time just flies by and you don't even remember? I met him, we, we were at one of these Globetrotter, uh, the BJJ Globetrotter um, camps, and I've been like a, a mainstay in one of those camps for, for years. You know, I, I did kind of one of the very first ones, and I was like essentially the first person who ever got the, you know, the, the, first, the first pizza, which is like when you, when you do when you do like ten camps, you get like the first pizza. So I was like, it sounds strange, but I was kind of like one of those almost like royalty at one point. I was like, oh man, everyone knows me for for being the guy who does all the classes because I used to do all the classes. Um, and the, one of the, the first ones we I'd gone to, uh, Joey was staying in in the same ho uh, hostel as us. So and if, I kind of if he met him, and he he was a Copenhagen, yeah, right? Is it Copenhagen? Yeah, this, this was this was in Copenhagen, and he, he was um we met I met him in, in the hostel I was staying in. He was like you know a few rooms down or whatever, um and he was a brown belt at the time, and I believe I was a blue belt, and he was he wasn't too far off his black belt at that time, at that point, and so it was just one of those random meetings of, we met in the, in the in the lobby of the the hostel, had a few drinks, started got got to know each other really well, and subsequently we. have I want to say we've been on like three or four camps together and I visit, I went out there to visit him and we went to the, uh, the main camp. I oh, know. Yeah. I think it was Maine or it was Maine. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I get confused. There's so many camps. Uh, and then we, re we met up again at, at Copenhagen camp. Um, and then he, he came to visit me in London. Well, he came to visit me and went to London. Um, we did like a mini Euro tour and, and ended up, uh, in Belgium. Um, doing some doing some training there so he, he's a, a super cool dude so if he's listening to this joey um he invited me to stay with him and i met all his you know his, his guys and traveled around america with him or so uh, eastern coast evil new york and, and and connecticut and stuff so he we mentioned like, he had pretty, some pretty wild times in uh, denmark especially in, was it the independence <laughs> week or something like that um oh man we had is that, is that a different time i think I can't remember the, it, you know, when you have like so so many stories. I'm trying, I'm trying to think back. And you kind of put me on the spot. I remember, yeah. First, the first initial camp was like quite. A, I felt it was quite like a tentative camp because it wasn't. No one was quite sure what kind of camp it was. Like a lot of people were there to train. A lot of people were there to to party. And we we subsequently went on another one and we returned to Copenhagen altogether. And we went on the party week. It was called the Party Camp, and in Denmark, in the streets of Copenhagen, they have these huge festivals. Well, this huge festival every night on the streets. They they basically shut off the streets. So imagine your high street or wherever you live. They shut off the high street. They have like DJs playing rave. People are just partying in the streets. You know, having a good time. Genuinely having a good time. No one's like fighting and doing crazy stuff like that. Everyone's just like fight. Everyone's just like dancing, having a good time, drinking. And then it like hits nine o'clock or something or whatever the time it was. Everyone like disperses and goes home. And then everyone returns the next day and they party. So we were like, we were, we were training during this party camp. So obviously we're all going out partying every night. And in the day we're training like six, seven hours of jujitsu. And then, oh, we're going to go start drinking now. And then we go drinking and party all night. And it's just like a very bizarre thing to have is like you imagine any big city in, in the UK and you, you close down the main streets and have live DJs playing music and giving out beer and stuff and then oh it's nine o'clock so everyone yeah. let's just go home see you tomorrow it just wouldn't happen here you'd have like <laughs> you have like parties going on till four five six in the morning and, and, and 
no one going to work the next day, right. <laughs> essentially. But yeah. we had some great, really good stories, really good times there. Yeah. Well, he told me about this um, this book that he read, and I don't think I've ever talked to you about it. It's kind of it's crazy, isn't it? Like you've done, you've done all this, I have never I've never even asked you about it before. So I bought the book. <laughs> yeah. I bought the book, so it's coming next week. Uh, have you got the book? Is and is that is that how you is that how you got into the uh, which books? This sorry, the is this is this the Globe Trotters book? Globe Trotters book, yeah. The um, yeah, get, yeah. traveling so around the world. Was, that's correct. Basically, yeah, no camps. It, it's been like I, I didn't even know the book existed. Um, a friend, a friend came to me and said, "Oh, I've, I've read this book and and uh, um, I, I, it's like training camp in Denmark. It's like a week of jujitsu." At the time, I was like, "I think I'd be a blue belt for maybe a year or something." And at that point, I was like really into it. You know, you, you, there's a point where you kind of hit it, where you're like, you know what, yeah. I'm in for life. And I knew like at that point I was in for life. And I kind of said to him, you know what, this, this would be a great opportunity because you don't get massive amounts of training. Well, you do now you do. But at the time, I, I know we spoke about this before in the past. Like, at the time when I was started training jiu-jitsu, there just wasn't an influx or a massive amount of people who you could train with within the area like you yeah. know now some of our classes you've got 30 40 people showing up training jiu-jitsu but at the time you, you'd be lucky if you had like four or five people to train with so right. we really weren't exposed to um people outside of jiu-jitsu i mean that sounds daft doesn't it but we weren't exposed to other people and cross training and being able to go to gyms because we just didn't know any different um but obviously when you get to a certain level you feel like oh, you know i need to test myself but it wasn't really about testing yourself it was just seeing what's out there so my friend had come to me at the time and said, oh, do you want to try this? And I thought, yeah, you know what? That sounds like a really cool thing because I don't like the normal holiday stuff. I can't go and sit on a beach and chill out. I have to be active and doing something. And because this was something that I just did every day anyway, I thought, well, let's go on holiday. Let's go, let's go see Copenhagen, really cool city. And we get to train jiu-jitsu with people from all around the world. Well, certainly all around Europe and well, all around yeah. the world because that's how I met a lot, of, a lot of the guys from America and Canada and stuff. So... Um, I didn't even actually read the book or, or didn't even know the book existed. It was just purely my friend had said, do you want to do this? And I said, yeah, you book it, you book it. I'll give you the money and we'll go. And is that's it, is it quite, is it quite a cheap or is it quite expensive thing to do? I thought it would be quite an expensive well, I mean, trip. It depends on, I think for, for the value for money you, you get on the, on the actual training camp is fantastic because essentially if you break it down, you like think how, how many hours a week, are you training or how many hours a month do you train jiu-jitsu maybe the average person will train three three hours a week so we're looking at 12 hours 12 hours a 12 hours a month so when you break it down in your membership and what have you and we looked at it like well we can get in like 10 hours a day training or the best part of seven or eight nine hours a day training sparring rolling technique and you can do that for like six days so you're essentially, mm. you, you can do, you can do, it's like eight months of training within a week is, is how I kind of looked at it. So in terms of value for money, it's fantastic. Mm. Um, you get exposed to so many people. And I guess the, the, the main thing is you, you, I started off as a blue belt wanting to learn. Um, and then when I sort of, the, the last camp I went to um, as a brown belt, I was able to, um, you know, I was one of the, you know, you're one of the senior members, you're one of the elders stay. People look you're like, oh man, there's a brown belt. You know, you, they're not so much in that, that aura because there's, you know, because it's not a massive thing and no one really cares too much. But certainly it's like, oh, I was here when I was just a blue belt, you know, and I was looking up to purple belts and brown belts and black belts and, and asking them for advice. Um, so you, I went in there, the first camp, and very much I want to learn. And then coming up to my last few camps, I'm like, oh, really cool to meet my friends, roll with some yeah. higher ground test myself a little bit against those people um so there's a really cool journey that that's been a massive part of, of my thing so i guess the only really thing you look at is dependent on where you go so if you go to a more expensive city you're obviously paying more for for general things but i mean you could like anything these days travel isn't too expensive you know you, you book a cheap you book a flight where you need to you get you get your own accommodation you can sort stuff out and take that all out of the equation, you know, the, 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 the Globetrotters is a fantastic, you know, opportunity and very affordable and a great price for what it is to, to train every day. So, yeah. yeah it's, it's not... Is it, is it quite a, a, is it a thing for new beginners really? Would you say? Yeah. I mean, it's for all, it's for all. For um, all. Right. It's for everyone. 
on because like I, like I just sort of saying it, it it's you can go into it as a complete wipe and i've met people who you know i've been sat in a bar and i've been chatting to guys who are on the camp and hadn't obviously seen them yet on the mats and they were like yeah yeah i've been training for you know a couple of weeks yeah. I'm like what you've been training a couple of weeks I'm like yeah yeah i just thought i'd try it and there was one guy who who i remember it was a friend of like a friend and he hadn't trained jiu-jitsu before at all he just came on this with his friend his friend lent him a gi <laughs> and he was like, well i'm just gonna learn i'm just gonna start like throwing That's in at awesome. the deep end. So That's awesome. it, it's for people like that who want to come into it. Like, you know, I can, I can learn eight hours of tuition a day. And yeah, granted, you're not going to take all of it in. A lot of it's going to be advanced, and what have you. But it is mat time. And that's yeah. the way I always look. Yeah, there's stuff which I'm not quite understanding, but it's mat time. And you're probably the same with when I train. You, know, you, you sometimes attend sort of the mixed level classes. Oh, yeah, this 100%. Stuff, oh, I don't know what this is. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. But Dude, every it, every training session it blows my mind. <laughs> and so this is the thing: it's like you. One hundred percent. I don't know what's going on half the time, but that's what I love about it. Mm. And then it will become to the point where you, you you take a bit of information from everything, yeah. and then you start to learn. You start to pick up more pieces, little bits here and there, and then all of a sudden the puzzle becomes quite complete. And then it's just a case of when the, the more experience you get and the more um advanced grades i guess you you become um it's all about that whole thing of refining those skills and deciding what you like doing and making it your game and stuff like that so um it's certainly for everyone i feel there's something you can you can definitely do like as a higher grade i felt like when i went there i wasn't like too bothered about attending all the classes like i used to be for me it was really about hanging out with cool guys who, who had known for a long time and getting to train, you know, getting to train with a lot of the black belts and the brown belts who, who I could, you know, not so much test yourself because, but at the same time it is, it's like to see what other people are doing and see where you, see where you kind of fall in, in that sort of where, where am I as, a, as this grade? What, where, where do I kind of stand? What do I need to work on? And, um, and it's kind of, it, it's good because you, you get, a variety of different people like you get the chilled out rollers you get the intense ones you get this the competitors you, you get a nice mixture of everything so you yeah. are going to have, have a good experience from day one you've never trained before or day for well, 10 years and you're black belt and you can still get you can still take a lot of information from from the wealth of experience there yeah so a lot of people they, they call it spazzes is that is that aggressive people yeah, have you, heard that, have you heard that expression? Yeah. 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 Is that, is that so, an American thing? I don't know if it, I don't know where it sort of necessarily came from. Um, but yeah, definitely spazzers is, is, I mean, it's quite a derogatory term. Um, but essentially, it's like the guys who I think are going to come into the gym and they're not quite relaxed and they're going to go a little bit crazy because they don't know. It's kind of like, and you, you'll probably vouch for this. You, you'll probably, you probably see people when they come into our gym and they've never trained before or they've trained very limited and they've been thrown into a sparring uh, situation. And it's like, well, I don't know anything. Yeah. I don't want to get choked. So I'm going to try and fight as hard as I can with everything I've got for yeah. about 40 seconds. And it doesn't matter what happens. It's like a, world, it's like a little Tasmanian devil spinning spinning during a roll and, until they gas out. Yeah. So it's kind of like that spazzing aspect of just all out, hell for leather, not really knowing what they're doing, yeah. just hoping they can escape from a, from a, a bad situation or, <laughs> or, or get in a good situation through sheer spazziness. Yeah, well, I, I, saw, <laughs> I saw this thing on Reddit earlier. It was, it was saying about how spazzing mm. like um, 80 pound um, puppies. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, they, they have absolutely no idea what they're doing, but they're just wag, wagging their tail and so excited. They don't fucking. <laughs> I'm guessing. Yeah, that's it, yeah, it's quite funny. Yeah, you could do. I mean, the general, the general um, cons uh, consensus is, um, you know, spazzy white belts because they're the guys who, again, we just as I just explained, they don't really know what they're doing. They're just flying around, hoping not to get submitted, and try to catch right. some random submission that they saw on UFC or or. Right. or Bellator or <laughs> something yeah. Yeah. Um, until you get a little bit of maturity um, I think that that potentially can be in people's people's like yeah you know, that, that can be in their mindset I guess so I kind of want to foster that mindset of 
just drop in ego and kind of when you get submitted be grateful because you because you're learning oh yeah of course, of course yeah you know yeah, i mean even even if even if it's a girl man like that's that's a very hard kind of oh yeah thing, yeah, hell no. thing for, yeah. For, honestly though for a guy yeah, to no. get submitted by a girl it's like shit you know I, I, it, yeah it can be my, you know, my, still... yeah you, you shouldn't have any it's any like... kind of ego at the end of the day like if they're better at jujitsu then they're better yeah. at jujitsu <laughs> shouldn't be any like prejudice or anything but i mean there always is that that thing of men and women isn't there there's always like oh women no, they're physically not strong enough they're not technical enough they don't move as well as men so therefore a man can always win and it's almost it's always i mean it's always been in our society and i think this is this is not going too deep or have you but it's always been in the society where you know women beating men in a fight it just doesn't happen it'll never happen to me but the reality is, you know, there are there are some phenomenal brown, purple, black belts, blue belts, yeah. women out there who, who and there's certainly if you've come to our gym, we've we've had we've been very lucky to have some um some quality females come through our gym traveling. Um and they, they, you know, you put them in against uh, some people and you know, like, well, this girl certainly knows what she's doing. And they do they catch they catch some of our guys and they're like, oh, what happened there? Like, yeah, I know, a 50, 50 kilo woman just submitted you, but it's not about her being a woman. It's about her having the skill and the ability to, to, to catch you with stuff. Um, so so. There, there is that element, I guess, of just leave your ego at the door, have a go. And, and But I, it's tough. We all, everyone has an ego in, to a certain degree, and everyone would be lying if they said they didn't. If they didn't talk about it or, or discuss it with their friends, they're certainly thinking in their mind of, oh, it shouldn't happen to me or yeah. shouldn't allow this to happen. I'm better than that. And, oh, I got caught by this guy. I nearly got caught by that guy. It's always going to be there. It just depends on how you kind of manifest that and how, how, how you bring it out. Yeah. And if you're, if you're able to just accept it and be like, oh, I'll just do better next time. But you should still always think about it. You should, it, it and I don't think that's the ego. I think that's the good part of it. Of, you know, this, it doesn't matter who got me with what or how I got caught with what. It's how no, can I... It's how. It's, how, can I deal, what, how can I deal what, with that in the future? What could I have done better? That, yeah. You know, how could I have dealt with that in a different way? That's the questions you should be asking. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of times it will be, um, and hopefully you'll, you'll find this out as well, it'll be, I've got to be submitted a hundred times by the same guy doing the same thing every week to, to get a better understanding. Because you don't... Yeah. You, it's very caught to oh i got submitted by this armbar oh i'll never get caught again well the reality is there's there's guys who who i train with at, at, at my club my uh, my training club at doncaster who they'll catch me with the same thing every week and it's like i should be i should know better to get caught by this but you there's just some things when there are so skills are so refined that you will you, you can't stop it and same in the other way is like there, there are people i can do the same thing on every time i roll with them and sometimes i make a habit of i'll do this every time to the same person the same way yeah and they're just to see they're perplexed oh, why, why you keep doing that just to see and it's one of those things of i'm gonna continue to do this and and 100 times until you kind of get it yeah so Rep so yeah that's a little bit but just repetition then at the, at the end of the day that's all it is. It's, time. Mm. it's like it's like what you said to me. It's, it's time spent on the mat. Indeed, yeah. It, it, I mean, what else? What else is there? Kind of, you have to put the time in. There's 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 no there's no way of of um, shortcutting and, and getting through it in an easy way. You, you don't you don't get through jiu jitsu. I believe anyway. You don't get through jiu jitsu by shortcuts at all. It's yeah. It's the, it is those times on the mats. It's, it's those it's the bad times, the good times. It's the times you get hammered, the times you're unfit, the times you're injured. You know, there's, there, there, are, there are things where, you know, people get injured and they'll take months and months and months off. And, and it's like, you don't need to. You can work around things and you can, you know, mat time is the most important, the most valuable thing you can, you can have in jiu-jitsu. It's not, it's not anything else, I don't believe. It's, 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 it's not buying geese or telling your girlfriend or you you know your your you whatever your, your, your dates that you do jiu-jitsu it's like it's time on the mat and putting it in and, and learning from all those experiences and it's such a cliche but it, it's you hear me say this all the time it's like it is time on the mat is the most important thing that's, that's the most you'll learn right yeah and you, you'll right. know that from 
That's right. So it, just going back to the previous point of um, yeah. of obviously Globetrotters trips, mm-hmm. Joey, Joey was saying that there's, a, there's an absolutely brilliant um, Mexican spot and there's like surfing, yeah. hiking, there's jiu-jitsu. Like, it sounds unreal. Like, have you got... Um, yeah, have, yeah it's, he's been inviting me for years. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask. Yeah, he's... I, um, I think they call it... I, I, I'm, I don't mean to butcher the, the, the name. I think it was like BJJ Paradise, I think it's called. He, he'll be able to tell you better. Um, I know him and another good friend, Brad, um, he, he, he trains in... Um, Brad Walston, he trains in Connecticut. Uh, he was at Hartford, but I think they moved they moved location. Maybe they're still in the same area. But he's a super cool guy, um, and I think he has like a he either runs it or he has a big say in how it how it runs. And Joey has been inviting me there for years. <laughs> he's always <laughs> like, "Come on, come on!" He's like, "Come on, Sam, you've got to you've got to come down this year." I'm like, you know what? Every time, I'm like, yeah, I think I can probably work it out. And, and but you you know what I'm like in terms of how 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 the, the academy is like. It's 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 full time now. So it's yeah. just, it's, it's difficult to take two, three weeks off and go travel America like I used to. Correct. Um, it, um, but he, he, he's been talking about it. So if you get the chance to go with him, you know, you should definitely, hook, you should definitely hook up with well, him. And, and go, I've bought the book, go, uh, so I've got to follow it through, right? Mm, I've got to, I've got mm. to go to one. Um, well, so. we, we went, um, I mean, uh, we, I didn't do the, I didn't do the, um, the paradise one. I think it's called Paradise, and again, apologies if I'm butchering it. Um, but we did the last camp in Estonia. Uh, a few of the guys from our gym, just actually before you, well, we did it last summer, probably actually around this time, thinking about it. But a few of our guys from our, our academy, we went there, went to Estonia, we, we rented an Airbnb, and you know, we did some training out there with the, with the guys in Estonia and on the Globetrotters. And, yeah, that was, that was a cool, fun experience. It, it was a lot of the guys from our gym. It was the first time for them. So it was the first time right. experiencing that thing. That's awesome. And, there were, and a, lot of, a lot of them asking, oh, are we doing it again this year? I'm like, well, obviously, right now, the circumstances, you know, it's not possible. But, you know, there was, a, there was a big shout for us. Oh, yeah, we could probably do another one. Yeah, we could, we could, do, and we could go and do another camp. And I'm always up for doing them because, for me, it's just it's, it's a great opportunity to go out and drink great beer in, in awesome cities. <laughs> And I get to meet up with friends. Yeah, cheers. And I've met up with friends who meet back up with friends who I usually don't see very often. You know, I see maybe once every once one or two years. So then I get to roll with some really cool people. And, and um, so so they are they are genuinely fun. I do I do I do enjoy them. Yeah. But, but obviously, with now. your life circumstances, I, I do want to get. I do want to really uh, dive into this because obviously you've got yeah. a lot yeah. on your plate at the minute. So. You you own it's your academy, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, that's that. Yeah, yeah. So the the East Midlands BJJ Academy. Um, it's like I I I run it all by myself now. You know, I uh, pretty much I, we were discussing this a while ago of how how I I pretty much just micromanage everything just because um, yeah. I just I, I, it, it is just like part is part of me. It is, it is my it is my identity almost. It's like if, if you took me away from that, you'd just get some guy who just drinks in a bar, probably. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's um, place PlayStation or whatever. Um, yeah. But it is my entire identity, really. You think about yeah. the amount of time and effort I put into it, um, the struggles we've had. We built the academy, and you've seen how it's just it, it's just exploded over the last six months. And and be well, the last six months really was was when I took that leap of faith and wanted to push forward with this and. and you know, I was always told, you know, it's, you know, you, you know, you can, you have a, you have a few people, but you will never do, you know, you never really make it into a thing. And then I just thought, well, you've got to give it a try because, you know, this was something that I was passionate about. There's a lot of people in our club who, you know, and who've been with us for a while, um, who have been very passionate about training jiu-jitsu and having an academy and having, having our own identity and, and kind of breaking away from, going from like you know renting space here renting space space there and sharing space and no one's really quite sure who's with who and and so it was a great opportunity for me to just get our own identity as a club and 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 literally you you've you've seen the influx of the people who've just come through the the doors and people who want to train with us and and it's been incredible it's just such a shame right now that this is this 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 world situation is, is 
has really just it's kind of derailed <laughs> what we were working towards for or yeah. put it on put it on hold for a little bit which i mean given the situation we you know in the grand scheme of things it's, it's far more important that people are safe and survive and, and what have you um but you know when you do work hard for, to put that together correct um, yeah. so i guess that's your question yeah absolutely I, I pretty much um you know do everything myself you, you know it's like i'm i'm, I'm pretty much trying to do everything myself and, and, and yeah I'm sure at some point it will but, change around. Yeah. But you literally you stripped the entire floor and built mats. You you it wasn't yeah. was just purely mats, were they? There's those foam there was there was yeah. obviously the, so the surface of the this, mat and it, go on. This might be my I don't know if it'd be my claim to fame. I, I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that the, the mats that I have are probably the most unique mats in the world. Yeah. I, think <laughs> that one. I don't think anyone's ever built the mats the way that i've built them you know and to the to the to the untrained eye and to whatever people will walk on the mats and be like yeah just like any other mats but it was just like it i think it's just down my, my personality and, and and the way i like to do things i i wouldn't have felt happy because if i just done it just bought some cheap mats and had it down like my my theory behind oh, my my goal really was to build the academy and make it make have something so unique that uh, other people don't you know you walk you can walk into any gym and you can have normal mats um but and we spoke about this before of like I, I wanted to go above and beyond i was like wanted to create the most i wanted to make like really good matting uh for our area and there's still things i, I would love to make even better i just don't have the resources that, you know and, and the finances to make it absolutely yes i want my, you know your ideal goal is this is my ideal goal and I'm like there right now, but when I do eventually one day make it, it will be the all singing, all dancing one that I want to. But yeah, I kind of, I kind of, it was just like researched a bit and, and the way I made, I, I made it. Um, I have to give huge shouts out to the, the, you know, the people who helped me uh, build them. Um, our, our good friend, Nathan, who, um, you know, train with, he, he spent hours and hours and hours helping me put this together um putting the matting together and the long days when we were yeah you know drilling into concrete and all this crazy stuff and he, he was with me and, and he, he he put um so i have to always be thankful for his time and everyone else who chipped in to help you know um who, who came along helped paint and stuff but um yeah i think i think sorry going back to to, to your point there the, the, there were kind of very unique mats that i built for myself and you know if anyone wants to actually know what i did it's no secret I, i'm more than happy to, to you need to, to you you need to make a video dude of of exactly okay. what you did what okay. material you used um how how you went about it because yeah especially yeah. especially after this crisis man the amount yeah. of people yeah. that are rolling on who knows what they probably roll on <laughs> like the, the lawn, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I did. I, you know, we did a few um, uh, uh, live videos recently, and, and helping people to try and make up their own mats. And a couple of our students have actually contacted me and, and have asked, "Oh, how can I build a mat? How can I build it?" And even like a makeshift uh, way of building it. So, so I mean, I did. I did. Um, I did film a lot of the stuff and I did, I did kind of there was there's pictures and there's all stuff. And I think at some point in the future, that whole thing will be like, yeah. this is where we started and this is where we kind of ended yeah. up. That whole thing. How, quite nice. How, to how have you told the people that have contacted you? How did you um, explain how to make the mats then? Well, there was a couple of things. Um, the first one, the way, the way that I built the mats that I had was was essentially it was I I'd spent I I bought good judo style mats so I bought like proper uh, foam fifty mil foam. Is this is this but what people can do right now though? They they could but you you're looking at the, I mean this is expensive the, the the matting I bought was very specialized in a way um, but if you wanted to less if you wanted to make a cheap mat from home like there are some things that I've been advising people like the first thing you could do is if you have like a lot of cardboard. You know, you could you like you know when you buy a TV and you have like boxes and boxes, you could like stack those boxes three or four times up, and you can make like a nice kind of very makeshift frame, right? So, you know, like a makeshift underlay. The other thing you could do is you could actually buy carpet underlay, which is a little bit more expensive, 
essentially that's what we use in our mats. We have our we have our matting, which is our fifty mil uh, mat that you when you get slammed on, it's like oh it's quite nice, yeah. Um, and underneath that we have yeah we have I have um, the underlay, which is a uh, essentially like a I call it a sacrifice f foam. But it's like the stuff you put under normal carpets. So I just stack that up and, and then underneath that, there's more bits. So that could be an option as well. Maybe you go down to your local carpet store. Well, not now, you can't, but maybe online. And you could buy a roll of um, underlay foam, a couple of, couple of layers of that, uh, maybe a layer of cardboard. And then, you know, there's always that option. You know, there's kids' jigsaw mats you can always buy. Um, yeah, I've got some of them. They're not great. They're not great, but... Then obviously the purpose isn't for jujitsu. However, if you were to put them on top of, you know, padding, yeah, maybe, well, I suppose, yeah, that's right. You, you could yeah. definitely make something. Um, I'm kind of interested to see what some of the students are going to come back with. Our guys, have, have started to essentially assemble uh, map spaces and things like that. Um, so I'm kind of intrigued to see what people come back with. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, it's funny because you've, you've created this foundation where people feel comfortable to come. Even, even at the lowest ability, people can come along and feel welcome. Absolutely. And, yeah, um, yeah. Especially, uh, I'm, I'm quite, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm quite fit, like physically. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was quite easy to be like thrown on the floor and stuff. But you're able to kind of you'd say, if, if you're new, then partner up with someone higher high belt because they'll, they'll know what they're doing, right? Yeah. Well, I think that's the, the ethos of, of exactly what the club is and, and the way I've always wanted to make things was we, everyone's there to help each other. And, you know, you're only as, you're only as good as the partners you have as well, because it, you know, you don't want to be, it's, a funny, it's like a thing, they don't break your toys because you can't play with them. Right. So you want to nurture, you want to help out the, the guys who are coming through because essentially it, it would be great like to have, training partners who can push you to the, that level that you brought up like that is the ultimate i think in, in as, as martial arts it's like as a, as a teacher it's like you teach your students to submit you and when they do submit you it's like job done it's yeah. that kind of mentality of um and you have to you have to bring those people in at the very very basic level and you have to like right how can i take this guy who's maybe not in great shape wants to learn jiu-jitsu um, and again, everyone has a different purpose of why they want to do it. You know, people want fitness. Some people just enjoy the aspect of the social aspect of it. Um, but I think it's important that, you know, we, you, you, you understand as a club what you are and where you want people. And by bringing people up from grassroots, you know, from, from grassroots, you know, bringing them up from people who walk through the door day one, never trained and taking them all the way through to, to a blue or a purple or beyond. And that's the, that's the kind of the process. And that is your longevity of any, and it should be the longevity. I think of a lot of clubs is having that structure in place. People can come in feel welcome. Yeah. I like this. It's not an elitist gym where you walk in and you say, God, I've got to be good or I'm not going to survive with these sharks type of thing. Um, there are, you know, full well, there are guys who are very experienced and, and very tough and compete. But how they integrate and mingle with the guys you come in from day one is ultimately, I think, what defines the club a little bit. It's like, yes. oh, you can be day one, and I don't even know who you are, but within an hour, we're going to be training with each other, and we're probably going to go to the pub afterwards and have a beer and exchange emails and, and phone numbers, and, oh, you, you do this, and I do that. Oh, okay. Well, and then all of a sudden, you've, you've got a friendship, a very, very strong friendship based on <laughs> Something like yes. that where maybe a lot of a lot of places, you know, a lot of clubs you would walk in and you you, you wouldn't. You would you just be like you do your do your training, you'd go home and you maybe wouldn't even interact with people. Sure. I kinda of wanted to ask you about um the online stuff you have planned because obviously <clears> you always <throat> you always had you always had a vision of doing yeah. digital stuff, but this has kind of propelled your vision into reality. Yeah. No yeah. obviously you, you won't be able to do it right now, but as soon as we back to reality I know for a fact we'll be doing a Q&A weekly, but I don't yeah. know if, I don't know if um, you've got any kind of... Um, any well, the, the, the plan was, uh, the plan was always, from my perspective, was always to have an online database for people to, to I mean, it is one of those things of, from purely from a selfish point of view, of 
I want to go home at evening and having people ask me questions and questions and questions. And, and that's not a problem. I don't get, me, don't get me wrong, but it is one of those things of if every member who was a member had a database of information that they could look at, that adds so much more value to not only a product that we have and, and the, excuse me, and the club that, that we have, like you have access to the stuff. So if you miss a week, you can catch up. Yeah. And I thought it was very, I've always thought it was very important to go down that market, but because business is business and you, you always get busy doing everything. You're like, Oh, I'm doing this and doing that. I'll find some time. And you know what it's like. Oh, well, let's do some filming tonight. Oh, we'll do it next week. Cause we're all a bit tired. It's hard. So that, that now it's like, you've almost been like, we, well, I've certainly been forced into like, how can I now put this together? Because it, not only like, it sends your brain down different wavelengths. Yeah. Uh, it, I, I, it's like, I feel like it up. we were like, we were sat, we were sat there like, what, what are we going to do? <laughs> and now yeah, you're kind of yeah. thinking, let's get and, and the other thing, well, What's to say that something like this doesn't happen on a, on a, a five year decades well probably not obviously not a century it's not gonna it, we won't be around then but certainly what happens is this happens every five years and um, i don't have a backup now uh, i personally for my business don't have a backup but you guys don't have a backup to look for you you know your people who want to learn jiu-jitsu are now probably going on youtube looking at, at all kinds of information and, and uh from my point of view they don't have any direct tuition from me and my style and that's not a problem I, i've always said you know people can people can look at what they want and they'll always go and look at gravitate towards certain people and i certainly do but then there is that aspect of like you might want to ask me about this like a certain move or a certain situation you might want to ask me because you train with me and you've seen and you, you, you've been consistent so if you don't have that I mean, that's, that's an area which I can, I can offer you guys. Like I said, like, right, I can offer our members a, a, a solution to a problem they may have that they want to know from me, but I can't give you it. Um, so that's a, 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 one of the main reasons was absolutely to, to have this in place. I just don't see this. I see this on, the big, on a big scale, you know, with you know, guys like Marcelo and AOJ and they have these fantastic gyms, they have these fantastic reputations and they have these uh, great databases of, of knowledge that they can give to their students. But why isn't like the average guy down the road who runs a, you know, a BJJ gym, why can't he do it? Why can't we, again, we're going back to the point of what are the, what are the market leaders doing um, in, in their industry? Why can't, why can't the, the small academy who, who's, Who's in? Who's you know, off a back road? Whatever. Why can't they be like that and give? You know, especially you guys who 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 are very grateful that pay subscriptions to our club and, and keep it surviving and going and prospering beyond this. And it's like, why not give everyone um, something extra as well? Because how many clubs do that on a on a really small scale? It's it's it's, it's few and far between. And I think it just adds so much more value to a, to a product and to a club when you know you can have that to rely on um and obviously this has all really like pushed it forward because right well people want to continue training and they want to continue learning from our club and if they want certain techniques that i'm teaching they can't have access to that so i've got to be able to, to offer them in some some way shape or form so this has absolutely it's pushed everything forward and said right let's let's go forward with this and do it um obviously the, the train again has been a little bit derailed and we're having to change the model completely like we're saying like how can we use digital technology and you and i both right now are almost like you know we're looking at everything and say oh i could maybe learn about this and take the time to learn about the, the, this era because we may be back here in a year's time That's and right. if we didn't learn from this experience then we're idiots. <laughs> no, let's learn from it. Absolutely, I feel like you need to use this time um, mm -hmm. to, to learn to learn a skill like, for sh for sure. Plan, plan if for if you look if you're lucky enough to have some time anyway. I know a lot of people are still working from home, mm -hmm. so I mean, yeah. I, I don't know how hard people are working at home, but they, they surely the, the, all, all the minimum the the time that they spend traveling they, they don't they don't have that anymore. So maybe they've got yeah. an extra two hours that they could just spend reading something or looking into That's a topic. It. How can, yeah. why not learn 
something that's going to help you certainly if you're a self-employed individual how can you you know anything if you're a yoga instructor if you yes. do massage therapy or if you do something why not take this time now to to make online content why not if you can't make it how about i learn how to do it from the basic steps of how do i set up a youtube channel how do i do instagram live and you and i again with a lot of this <laughs> we're a bit of a nightmare of that do we but <laughs> we're well we're learning we, we, we're we trying to be you know in, in three months time we'll probably look back on this and we'll have it all kind of not super nailed down but we will have right we know how to do this we know how to do that and we're in a, we've got a good we're in a good position to to move forward and if anything like this were to happen again well we know and we're probably going to be i i envision we're probably still going to be doing this as well as so we're just creating essentially we're just creating more work for ourselves <laughs> during <laughs> when we get back in so our workload will be doubled it's not only we're That's doing right. online products and stuff but we're having to do the physical aspects of, of teaching and, and running an academy as well so yeah <laughs> it's just more more work we're creating more work for ourselves essentially well hopefully less in the future if that makes sense yeah of course if, well, um, what, yeah yeah what is your what do you say is your focus obviously you're working 50 sessions per week mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and week you, <laughs> month, <laughs> sorry a week yeah so yeah yeah what, week, what do you think is your focus over the next 36 months if say if the pandemic was over right mm. and mm. you we're all back to normal everything's everything's absolutely normal again what what is your yeah. focus what are you looking to do are you looking to get move your um, get more of your time back and employ more people or what well i, I guess it would depend on how uh, the the ultimate the ultimate goal would be absolutely to have the academy where we we can bring in multiple uh, people to, to teach everyone that's within the same syllabus or within the same principle because there's nothing worse sometimes than bringing somebody in who's got a completely contrasting style to to the head coach let's say and almost uh, uh, it just it, it creates a lot of uh, differences in styles um, not no, not differences in styles but maybe conflicts in, in what people should do I think you have to have a very synergetic uh, approach to having instructors in um, but absolutely, I think I think it'd be a fantastic to have, especially have some homegrown talent who, who we've built up throughout the years to now be able to instruct the new talent or the new guys yes. coming in fresh. Okay. Because that is essentially how businesses should run. I know, I know Simon came in and um, yeah, yeah, his purple belt and he's an absolutely fantastic um, yeah, Simon, artist. Yeah. He, he he came in for one session, but his description of the detail was very yeah. very good i don't know how long he's been training for but have you, well, have, you I mean, have you trained him the whole time well we uh i mean simon hopefully if he's listening big shout out simon um yeah, I've known shout him out you, man. and we've been we we've kind of grown up together training um you know what i mean it's like we, we we didn't start at the same place we started at different places but we we kind of you know you start here you start there and we've kind of come together and I, I think we've been, I've been very lucky with, with him and a couple of others who really we gravitated towards each other since we met each other and, and we've, we've been able to work with each other and our, our, our paths have kind of always intertwined and stayed with each other whereas other people maybe floated off to different places given circumstances and situations <clears throat> excuse me but we've always grabbed we've always stayed stayed very close to each other and, and I think Whereas I was able to probably make this and push this forward, my own personal benefit as well. And he, he certainly was with, with me a lot of the time. So we've kind of grown up together, almost like, almost like BJJ brothers in many way. Um, a few of us have just come through the ranks together. And so we've, we've always tread the same path closely. So we always have very similar um styles because that's the way we, we when you train together so long oh what did you do oh yeah yeah and what did, and all of a sudden you see each other every day and you learn from each other and you you you, you, you develop your own you develop your own taste your own spin on certain styles but because you're closely and there are going to be aspects of, of simon's game for instance you, where you see in mine but in a different it'll be very similar but it'll be very different as well because obviously we're, we're, we're different people and we have different mentalities and different um, attributes and he's going to do something a lot different to me 
but probably the end goal is going to be the same. And that's why when, when we bring someone like him, him in and hopefully we're going to do more with him to, to, to help guys and he can say, well, there's reliable people within our club who have been, who, who, and then looking sort of beyond that, you know, some of the, the guys who the homegrown talent we've, we've brought up from white belt to blue belt who, who are really like crushing it at the competition now. And, you know, I certainly feel over the last three months, we just, we hit a level which was, we kind of were just put into that next level. You know, people who were on the cusp of doing great or really good things just kind of matured. And then, you know, you know, for sure the last competition we went to and every one of our, every one of our competitors you know, got to the final. And we'd never had that before. And it, it wasn't like a very lucky, <laughs> we, we, we fluked our way through stuff. You no, know, there, was, there was legit technique and skill and maturity that took all those guys to the final and won some medals, won, we won some golds, and won some silvers. Um, but certainly having those people like that who, who you can rely on in the future would be a, a massive, uh, massive achievement more than anything because you've gr- this is exactly what we're talking about before when we spoke about the ego, bringing people up and not keeping people back from ego, but actually bringing them to a level where they could be very similar to the head coach or very, very close to and appear, uh, not appear, but a peer on the same level who can now start helping out the new generation and, and giving time for uh, myself maybe and some of the others to go and do some extra stuff to grow the club. It's like anything like I spoke to you when you asked me before, it's like by doing everything is very time consuming. I would love to have people do my admin. Yeah. I would love to have people do the maintenance. I'd love to have people do all these kind of stuff that I don't have to do. Um, so I think that long term will be will be certainly the way we kind of look for and we we say, yeah, bringing people in, hopefully keeping everything very synergetic. That's a, word, a very business word, isn't it? Synergetic. Synergy. Yeah. You've been reading your yeah. business books, haven't you? Yeah, it, it sounds like I am. So like I'm reading straight from the book of business, but a very synergetic uh, a way of, of bringing people in and working, but at the same time offering something a little bit different. Not having someone go in and, oh, you're doing like plan Z and I'm doing plan A or whatever. And you're like, um, we're doing completely different things. And you, don't, you definitely don't want people like have conflict of, of styles too much because you, know, you, you run the risk of, um, making it very difficult for people to understand what's going on, especially at a beginner level when they yeah. need those basic fundamentals to, to get them through this that period of uncertainty, I guess. What am I doing? Uh, yeah, what am I doing? Yes. Uh, do you th- so after a certain point, it, it's, more, <laughs> it's more how many training partners you have rather than the instructor, though, don't you think? Um, yes. Or, or do you... Or do you th- do you, or, did you always from from white belt for your first day to where you are now did you always have the same instructor no no to be fair i didn't um i i started um i started with a, with someone who really wasn't a jiu-jitsu guy but had done jiu-jitsu um and then i i was in a position where like anything you want to improve and i didn't feel i could improve in in that in that scenario and i was i was I was super lucky to uh, to, to to train at uh, my current gym that, that we're affiliated with is the Doncaster Martial Arts Academy, and train under you know fantastic bunch of guys there headed up by by Neil White, and I was really so lucky to 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 go into that group of people and train with some of the best guys in in the Midlands, like some of the absolutely fantastic, you know some of the best grapplers in the country, and MMA fighters and and so much experience there. And it was very unfortunate that just because of travel and, and the fact that, you know, I can drive, but, you know, I don't have a car and I wasn't able to, to, to make a sacrifice to, to, to visit them all the time. And you kind of, I slowly kind of moved away a little bit begrudgingly because I always wanted to stick with that. So I trained, you know, you train and then I was, I was really fortunate enough to, to get, you know, to, to, to move back, to get back in with them because of the transport, you know, it's purely because, wasn't anything it wasn't like anything we had a dispute or anything it was just purely because i couldn't make it as regular as i wanted to mm. i could maybe make it every now and again you know now i have the ability to, to to train there weekly and sometimes two three times a week and it's just um 
now I've got that. I've got a real. And it was funny because the moment I felt, the moment that I started back with the Doncaster guys on a consistent level, I think my game just my game just went to the next level. And I'd never really, I'd never had that before. Uh, well, obviously when I was with them, but when I started getting that consistency with them again, it was just like, it took me to that next level. And I really felt that my game improved so much. And subsequently, because of that, I was really able to hone better skills and offer you guys better training because my skills now have, have really started to, I've, I feel like I've, I've really, they've developed me so much now uh, to the point where you know, I'm not the best in the world. I'm not saying I am, but I definitely felt like a, a level up, you know, the mushroom came down and <laughs> came up. It, it, it felt like, <laughs> yeah. it felt like going back with them and having that consistent six to eight months with them training every week. And, and they've done, you know, I'm so, I'm so happy to, to be part of what they are and, you know, love those guys to bits and um, training with them is really, you know, I think it's taken our club to the next level. And you can see again, the, the quality, I mean, you, you can't deny that when we went to competitions and all our guys are getting to the final and not just getting to the final with fluking, they're getting with triangles and arm bars and stuff we've done in class. And, you know, uh, sh yeah, shout out to our guy Bjorn, who, who got his blue belt recently. I hope he's, hope he sees yeah, it. Congratulations, bro. Yeah. It, yeah. The, the, the fact awesome. that he went to those competitions, he was implementing stuff that we were teaching yeah. in classes to see that. It's just absolutely fantastic because you know then that that the quality or the, the the training you give to your um your squad your team your your or your family they're they're essentially going out on that stage and performing it's just like yeah you're doing it, it it validates everything we do as a club together when we help each other train so it's it's just from fantastic from that point of view that's that's really cool man so for for me because you you mentioned uh, competitions a lot um mm -hmm. just in that so I'm in my third month of, of training, as you know. So my, my thing for this year is I really want to get to a competition. I, I spoke yeah. to Joey about this. And I said, what can I do yeah. now in, in, in isolation, in lockdown to improve, yeah. improve myself, improve my mind, you know, improve my body? Um, mm -hmm. While I'm in this period, what, what would you suggest? Because he, he suggested um, conditioning, you know, like sprints, running, um, yeah. deadlifts. I think he, he's a, he's always been like, I know Joe, he's been a huge fan of, of that, that kind of stuff. And um, I think like, like he was saying, I think you just got to kind of be active. I'm, if I'm honest, I'm pretty lazy when it comes to my conditioning. I, I tend to find that my conditioning is, is fine by just training <laughs> and rolling with guys. And, and I don't really supplement it with anything else. That's just me being a little bit lazy if I'm honest. Um, so this period of time is like, well, I'm, I'm something because I can't, and you know, I always rely on, yeah, I'll get my training tomorrow. I'll do some rolls tomorrow. I'll get some yeah. hard rolls in guys and, you know, my, my guys at Doncaster and, and I'll get my open mat. So I'll always feel like I always get stuff. And, um, but I think certainly, yeah, I mean, the physical aspect of it, keeping, keep, keeping fit. And I don't know. I mean, people always talking about the mental aspect of, of, jiu-jitsu and there's been a lot of podcasts recently of men, the mental state of jiu-jitsu and how you can keep mentally um physically i'm sorry mentally in shape for, for jiu-jitsu um i haven't really um checked them out if i'm honest i've just seen a lot of, of stuff on on instagram and social media so I, I might be interested now to, to to read up on see what see what especially if there's people who um are of a high level like doctrines and stuff who, who are validating again some of this men mentality stuff certainly yeah, keeping the body fresh yeah um i think some of the drills we've been doing i think definitely keep keep up with the drills because that movement is vital i mean you know what it's like i, I always say when in class like i just take for granted that i can do things yes uh oh you can't put your knee to your chest but i don't say it in that way but and i don't yeah. think that but it's like i can do things but I take for granted, like you can do things that I can't do. We take for granted those things. Um, so it might be a case of a lot of, a lot of drills that involve um, that flexibility. You know, we're, we've kind of we've really jumped on. Um, we've been doing a lot of yoga in the club over the last few months. Yes. And again, shout out to Guru Potts, who I know he's nursing his, his injured shoulder right now, but um, he, he's, he's been helping out 
a lot with the yoga. So he's been developing that side for us and giving, again, giving the club like an extra little edge, if you like, or a little extra dimension. Yeah. So bringing in that, that flexibility. And again, you can see people improving because of this, this flexibility that they've, they've, they've accrued. They've, they've got this flexibility through, through help of that. And so again, I mean, the other day it was like a nice sunny day and, Again, I'm quite a lazy person when it comes to wanting to work out. I don't want to throw weights around. I hate doing stuff like that, if I'm honest. Uh, I'd rather just grapple with someone. But, you know, I found myself doing an hour and a half of yoga in the sun. Just because it didn't, it was a workout, but it didn't seem like, oh, I have to throw this around. I have to do that. Yes. So I think in, I think in many camera, ways. camera's gone off, bud. Sorry, low battery. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good for another five minutes. Sorry. Cool. Um, yeah. Um, it's it's cool that you brought that up because I, I was literally about to say that to you because um, me and my girlfriend we watched um, we watched Choke with Hicks and Gracie and he yeah he old was talk- school that was really old school yeah yeah and he was talking about how um, he uses meditation and yoga to kind of um, improve his breathing techniques and it and it massively yeah. helps yeah. his his jujitsu game as well yeah I think certainly there's there's a lot to be said about, I think this sport and in MMA in general, um, I'm, I'm not a huge real fan of MMA, but um, I used to be, but it's a very new sport and we don't know the best way to train really. You know, is it, is throwing weights around the best way to train is just doing jujitsu the best way to train. I think uh, maybe quote me wrong, but I think Marcelo is Marcelo Garcia is a big advocate of just doing jujitsu. I could be wrong, um, I may, but it's like, do you, do you supplement your jiu-jitsu with uh, uh, conditioning? Some people will say you absolutely have to. Uh, mm. Some people will probably say, actually, no, I mean, I've, I don't do conditioning. Um, but if I did it, would that give me more advantage? But, you know, I'm not the youngest guy, but I'm not old. You know what I mean? Like, is it it's a point where it might actually be the detriment to, to start throwing weights around and, and take away time from jujitsu. It's like, I always feel like the energy bar, you know, the, the street fighter two energy bar or street fighter five or whatever they're on. Now the kids play, um, you know, the energy bar depletes. If you've got, if you've got a, your energy bar is like a week of, of training, you know, am I going to do like a fifth of that weights when I could do, you know, five, five fifths of, of that doing jujitsu. I still think we don't know. Um, certainly, I like the aspect of more movement-based breathing control because, again, this is this is a very realistic situation. Of there are lots of guys who come in as beginners who are super strong, they lift weights, but when a guy like a smaller guy gets on top of them, they panic, they submit because they don't, they can't deal with the breathing, they can't deal with the pressure. But you can, bro, you can lift like 20, you know, 200 kilo, kilograms or whatever. You can do all this stuff. And you think, I don't lift. And if I can, if I can do this, I know I have like better technique. But in the same, you flip the coin and you say, right, you get on top of me, big lad. And you squash me. And you've got this small guy like just chilling, relaxing, thinking about the shopping and stuff. And I know it's a lot of experience, but that experience maybe come from learning to control your breathing learning to have the good movement. So getting back to that point again is we probably don't know the best way to train. Mm. I don't, you know I mean? I, 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 certainly I, I really advocate like movement based stuff and breathing based stuff. Cause I love to move. You know, I love to invert and spin around and, and be able to be able to almost like break dance and do stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I, I like the ability to, to do that. And I think a lot of that movement that I do is, very, is a technical movement. So it means that I can rely more on the movement than I can rely more on the strength and the physicality. If that makes sense. Which so to basically just to focus on movements, yoga, you want to be doing, you want to be keeping active, man. You want to be going out for yeah. bike rides, going for hikes, going for walks, going yeah. for runs. Yeah. Keeping stuff active, of course. Absolutely. Cause you, you still need to, you know, like movement is for me, it's like the movement of the heart, right? The, the heart needs to move. So you need to, you need to get some form of, uh, of um, the heart moving. 
So it's kind of, they're, they're, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of aspects to it. And then you could always talk about the recovery aspect. I mean, how many of us, and you can be honest with me and I'll be honest with you, is like how, how often do we actually recover correctly? Probably not. What, does any of us, do we, do either any of us, either of us or anyone in the group, stay around after stretching off and, and nah, we need to though, we dude. really do we do we have ice baths in the out no nah, yeah. really. that's, that's something we I, i'm yeah. going to start i i'm personally going to start implementing anyway especially stretch, well, why don't we have a month, stretch a month short uh, monthly sauna get together <laughs> <laughs> uh, it sounds weird doesn't it but like, yeah that sounds a bit strange but <laughs> that sounds weird. it's like why not go for a sauna why don't we do the sauna days? Why don't we do stuff that actually helps our recovery? Why don't we do like, why don't we all go for it? Why don't we have like a, a group on massage and we go to somewhere and we get stuff? You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> really bizarre. I don't, yeah, we're, we're, so, we're so focused on a lot of us results and, and training, but we, a lot of us forget about the, the recovery aspect recovery. of it, I guess. Yeah. So a trip to Vietnam, I, I, I suppose, get some, some massages. <laughs> Uh, well, maybe or Thailand. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we could just go locally. Or, I mean, it's just an option. You know, I mean, it's just like yeah. just something to consider when we're talking about the whole scheme of things. Like Joey was probably talking to you a lot about. He, lo he likes strength conditioning. He's lifting compound lifts. I know he used to do a lot of compound lifts. Like, I, I, yeah. He's still, he's big advocate. Yeah, he's a big advocate of throwing and moving stuff like that. I'm not a fan of that, but I don't know if it's right or it's wrong. I don't know what I do is right. Or you know, if I could, if I could have my 10 years in jujitsu, maybe I would do them a little bit different to see the outcome, but I wouldn't do it different if that makes sense, because that's how I wanted to do it. But it would be, it'd be nice to have a kind of, excuse me, a parallel universe, right? Sam did jujitsu and drank beer and did a bit of yoga and concentrated on spinning upside down every day. Sam in a parallel universe, um, decided to lift weights every day and do CrossFit and he was a beast. So how, 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 how were they going to, when they came together in this Marvel universe or something, how, how would they, how would they differ? What would one be more broken down than the other? Would I be more broken down if I lifted weights for 10 years? Um, would I be stronger? Would I have not no injuries? I don't know. I don't know. That's right, bro. Well, listen, bro, thank you very much for joining me tonight. Oh. It's been, uh, it's been really enjoyable. Um, but dude, like people are going to want to get in touch with you, uh, whether yeah, it's for yeah. getting in touch with you, for you for classes or just for mm -hmm. advice or any other reasons, really. I know that I tag you in a lot of videos. Um, so yeah, that's you, great. So if you look at my Instagram page, if you, if you see the person um, tagged, it's Sam. So yeah, um, head, head over it, to Sam's page. Where, where can they find you? It's well, if, I mean, if, you, if you're on social media, uh, East Midlands, BJJ, um you can find us on facebook you can find us on instagram we've i've recently started pushing a bit more on the youtube channel so slowly but surely putting new videos out drills and stuff and we'll have some new series coming up there so you can find east midlands bjj youtube uh we have like twitter but it's not something that we concentrate a lot on so if you really wanted to get in contact instagram facebook um, is a great way of, of getting directly to me and the club and yeah, the YouTube's always a nice option to, or through yourself. Usually we're, we're quite close linked in terms of our social media. We're, we're posting stuff, so you could probably get through to me there. Um, you awesome. could probably find us on Google as well, just on the website. But yeah. I mean, if you're on Facebook, if you're on Instagram, drop a message. Um, I'm try my very best to, to get back to people as and when I can. Awesome. Well, I'll leave the um, all your information in the description of this video. Um, yeah, please do. Yeah, that's really, really you, helps a lot. You, yeah, if you want to speak to Sam, uh, go to, go um, click on the link and you'll see it there. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it and it brought you value. And uh, we'll see you guys very soon. Great and stuff. Al and also, go. and go also, yeah. we we've got a sorry just to drag this on a oh, bit longer. Yeah. We've I want to get like a weekly Q and A sorted between me and you. So. <laughs> You know, after we go back to reality, um, you'll see a lot more yeah. of Sam on this channel as well. So, um, yeah, probably in the gi as well. In the gi. Oh, yeah. In the gi. Yeah. Hope to get some new rash guards, all that, all right. the, all that stuff. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I mean, that, that would be really cool because um, I, I do feel like there's a lot of knowledge that, that we can pass on to people. Um, 
And I think it is, it is nice to, to, to show people that kind of stuff. And especially again, for a lot of our members who, 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 who want to um, ask those questions, uh, who might not always get a chance to speak to me in class. Again, we spoke before, didn't we, about how the, the more customers you get, the bigger the business becomes, the more robotic the individuals are because we, sure. we don't have that man management as, as and much. You wanna keep, and you want to keep the personality there. You want to keep that Absolutely. kind of... Yeah, yeah. Keep you want to keep, keep, the, keep the culture within the class, which is awesome. Yeah, and people can see who we are as people. We're not just a, a, a robot who responds to emails. You know, we are real people and we're here to help. And it's just, it's hard, obviously, when you have to deal with 100 people all at once. Yeah. yeah. At the same time, you know, we'll try our best to, I'll certainly try my very best to help everyone <laughs> where I can, if I can. So awesome. it's not through lack of trying, that's for sure. That's all right. Well, dude, thank you very much, man. You have a good, you have a good Great night and, uh, and stay safe. Man. All right. Take care. Thank you very much, yeah, sir. Brother.